welcome to not today, Satan. Some of you say that when you uh, get up and your alarm's blaring and it's raining. You're like, not today, devil. Well, that's exactly what this week's set of devotionals are about. We are going to dissect some of the tools that the devil is using right now in your life. And we're going to kind of disassemble them and really establish the truth behind what goes on with the power that dwells within someone that follows Jesus. And I'm going to cut right into it, and I'm going to talk today about the devil's primary chief tool in his arsenal, and that is deception. It's deception. There's a movie, uh, a quote from a movie called The Usual Suspects. It's not a good movie, but um, there's a, a quote from one of the main characters in that movie. And he says that one of the greatest tricks that the devil ever pulled is to convince people that he doesn't exist. And frankly, that's where I think a lot of us are when it comes to Christianity. Like we are really, really pumped and excited to understand the work that God is doing in our lives. But we also fail to realize that Jesus instructed and told us and the apostles uh, told us that there's going to be this war, this spiritual battle. And one of the greatest tools that the devil is using right now in your life is convincing you that that battle is not happening or, frankly, that he doesn't exist. So he deals in deception. And this has been the way the devil has been since the beginning of time. So uh, this is what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. He says, I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden, he said, I'm afraid by his cunning, that your thoughts will also be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. He said, the deception game that started in the Garden of Eden has not quite ended. As a matter of fact, it's just as potent as it was back then. So let's examine what this looked like, and let's see how this can be really examined in our own lives. So Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. And we're going to break apart the uh, fall of man kind of in multiple layers throughout this week. But this is the first part. It says, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Now, I'm going to give you the context of this. Adam and Eve, perfect world, perfect humanity, created by God for God's pleasure. They were told that they could go anywhere in the garden, do anything in the world, it was theirs, they just had not to touch or eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we see right off the bat, the serpent appears, who is the devil, and the serpent says, hey, um, just so you know, I know God says that if you eat of this tree, you'll die, but you won't surely die. So something that was planted in Eve's mind that if I eat this tree, I'm going to die. The devil comes alongside and says, you know what? I mean, come on. You're going to die? Really? You're not going to surely die. That's it. That's all it takes. Deception. What is deception? Deception is a deliberate ploy to corrupt what is true. And that's what the devil does repeatedly. And frankly, just about every area of your life that is a mess, at the heart of the mess of it is a lie. Maybe the lie is that you have to do more to earn the love of those around you than you do. Maybe the lie is that you're never going to be that person that finishes their projects or that you're never going to be that person that gets done the things that he's supposed to do or she's supposed to do. Maybe you're always going to be that person that struggles with a temper and you are always going to be that person that has all these deficiencies with friendships. That's a lie and it's a deception that's been implanted. So I want you to realize that that's something that you have to turn over and really examine and say, you know what, this is not true. This is something the devil's trying to get me to believe, and I am not going to be weak and deceived and led astray away from God because I know that God has more for me. So uh, the question, I'm going to answer a question at the end of each one of these devotions. And today the question is, when we look at something like this, when we see Eve falling to this temptation and being tempted by the devil, we want to ask ourselves the question, can the devil read my thoughts? I mean, do you ever wonder that? Do you ever wonder if the devil can really know what's going on in your mind? The answer, based on scripture, 
is no. Based on scripture, it's no. Here's three verses. We don't have time to get into it. First Kings chapter 8, verse 39. Uh, it says that only God knows the hearts and the thoughts of man. Psalm 139, verse 4. says that God knows the thoughts of man before they're even formed. John 2, verse 25. It says that Jesus was aware of what was in man, what was in their thoughts, all of them and only Jesus. So we find here that the knowledge is reserved only to God. Now, I want to give you one bit of caution. You're like, okay, cool. The devil can't read my thoughts, but here's what the devil has observed. The devil has been observing and manipulating and using human behavior since the beginning of time. So he doesn't have to read your thoughts to know likely how the story is going to go. That's why it's so important that truth is your friend, that you hold on to Jesus, that you allow Jesus to transform your mind every day, that you become in love with the word of God and understanding who God is and his role in your life and allow the deception of the devil to be thwarted once and for all in your life. 